15 meters or so between them, maybe even a little bit less than that. But there he is, he's put his head up now. Put your head back down, Hosanna, don't be silly. And this is the inexperience again. Now the grass is actually not particularly long around here. Here he goes. No, no, not yet. Be patient, Hosanna. This is where he needs to, while the impala's got his back turned towards him, he needs to crawl. He needs to do a proper leopard crawl. He could easily put another two or three meters closer towards that impala. Remember, they don't need much. Ideally, they want to get right underneath an animal's feet and then pounce up and land on top of them, but sometimes that's not always going to work. And we'll see how this all plays out. But how exciting is this? This is so exciting. Impala, come back this way. Stop going the other way. He's got quite a bit of coverage. He's got the grass, he's got the termite mounds, there's a few little shrubs, so that's why I keep saying he could he could easily move towards this impala without the impala even knowing that he is there. See that? All the little senna trees, all the new bush willows that are just starting to grow. He can hide behind those. Now we're not going to move at all at the moment. We're gonna stay in the same spot. Oh. There we go, Impala spotted him. Did you hear that alarm? He's walking towards him. Now this is quite typical, of course, uh, of uh, impalas to do. If they do spot something, they'll often alarm and sometimes move a little bit closer to get a better view. There we go. Hosanna, what are you doing now? No, he's not interested anymore. He's actually just slinking off to the right. The impala actually doesn't mind too much of this leopard. Hello, beautiful. Yes, it's because you had your head above the grass, you silly chap. Otherwise, you could have potentially got another meal. Now, I'm... I, oh, he's going up further. What are you going to do with that big boy? Well, that's a little bit sad, I think. A big impala ram is watching, well, well, probably one of his friends. Well, maybe not his friends, maybe one of his enemies. Maybe that's him laughing at the moment, at the misfortune of the southern impala. But as um, Hosanna sort of shifts this carcass around, you can really see how big a, an impala ram actually is. They're not small animals. I think he's looking for another spot to try and move it around. But mm, that tree's got a bit too much vegetation on for him to be able to clearly hoist it even higher. Don't worry, Hosanna, that impala is not going to come and eat your kill. I think that's what he's worried about at the moment. Because <laughs> he panicked as the impala started alarming. I think, it, what, let's take this moment to reposition quickly. What I want to do is I actually want to go back a bit and see if we can't get the impala in the shot as well. So I'll just reverse. And just do a little bit of reversing. He's not... <laughs> It's very funny. Well, Sana is now snarling at the impala. He's showing his frustration, basically saying, I'm so annoyed that you've now given my presence away to everybody. Now I'm not worried about moving too much because they both know, well, the impala knows that Hosan is here. Just trying to get it so we can see this impala, but this impala has positioned himself in such an awkward spot. There we go. I think that should be okay. Now we can get both of them quite clearly. Yes, big boy, we can hear. We know that you know that there's a leopard in the tree. Well done. Your eyesight is fine. But watch Hosanna's face quite carefully, because like I said, you might see him show a little bit of frustration, which is always funny. Snarling, growling. Not at us, of course. They do it with birds. They do it with any antelope that alerts everyone of their presence. Hold on tight, boy. You're going to lose your kill. He's, he's still struggling. He's he's big, but he's not massive yet. So and I think he's almost bitten off a little bit more than he can chew with trying to hoist it around. He's eaten most of it, so it should ideally be a lot easier for him uh, to maneuver. I can't imagine how hard it must have been for him when he when he first caught the impala and took it up. I wonder if he did what Karula does and ate a little bit before he tried to hoist it. And it also explains why he didn't hoist it in a particularly big tree. I don't think he has developed the muscles just yet in his shoulders and in his hindquarters to be able to go straight up two or three meters up a vertical marula and then hoist it in a fork and in one of those trees. He'll take some time. Remember, he's still young. He's not even a year and a half old yet. 
He's still got a long way, a lot of growing to do, and he's doing a fantastic job as is. But how great is this? Finally, our hard work and patience is, well, not hard work. We didn't do any hard work this morning. I'm just trying to justify it. <laughs> but our patience definitely paid off. Mm -hmm. You're going to squeeze through the trees there. Where are you going? Come back here. We're not done looking at you, Hosanna. He's apparently done with us watching him. Up he goes. Up to the tops of the trees. Now, I don't know where he's going to sit up there. And I'm not sure what his plan is just yet. Unless he goes higher, there's a couple of branches that are nice horizontal branches that he could lay about. However, the ones that he, are walk he is walking on at the moment, that's impressive, are not particularly big. But it looks like he's settling down. Oh, that's fantastic, Senzo. What a beautiful shot of the leopard peering through the leaves. <laughs> he's very agitated at the moment. Again, he's not agitated with us. He's very frustrated with this impala ram that will now not go away. And he probably won't. He might stay here for a couple of minutes, keep shouting at little Hosanna. Shame, boy. <laughs> it's really funny to actually sit and see things like this. Now, none of the birds have started alarming, and there's lots of hornbills, lots of starlings, lots of drongos. They don't seem too bothered. Now, Kate B., you're wondering how old is Hosanna. He's not very old. He must be about a year and three or four months old now, so he's just shy of a year and a half. And he, of course, has a, a sister too, Shongile. So the fact that he's not even a year and a half old and he is taking down fully grown impala rams, unbelievable. That is really, really, really fantastic. There's, I think there's very few leopards that can say at his age that they've done what he's done. I think he's, he's done exceptionally well. He's definitely overachieving, which is great, and I hope that he keeps it up. It's very important for him to constantly keep feeding, feeding at this uh, young age. You know, imagine Karula hasn't been around. We are very uh, worried about her. We don't know where she has gone. We haven't seen any evidence of her which is a bit sad considering that we see Karula, we were seeing her almost every single day. So she ideally would have kept, kept these cubs for a little bit longer, even as old as two and a half years for Hosanna. Apparently Karula has a reputation for holding on to the male cubs. So he would have been provided kills for the next year and a couple of months. Now he's got to go off and do that on his own. And this is vital stages of muscle development, all these types of things. And the only way you can do something like that, of course, well, is by eating. And he's doing a great job. And I hope Shongile is doing just as well as him. Now, of course, you know Byron is on bushwalk. I saw him. I saw movement on the other side of Vuyatela Dam. And I think that is Byron. Should we go and say hello? It is indeed us, Taylor. And... Um we can see your wonderful sighting from across the dam.